Hey everybody, James Jaeger with Title Response. Introduce yourself. I'm Jacob Peterson. Uh, we're here with Exodus Knife and Tool. And I have one. Yes. Let's talk about it. All right. So I'm gonna get closer so you guys can kind of see what's going on here with this box. I don't know it's dark here. And boom, we got that thing right there. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, this is the Jackalope, and then we have the Adventure Craft, and these are uh, small to to medium sized knives based on a principle of um that, that's small right that's... this is my <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 well and I, f I forget how small this is when i first saw them i was in person got in hand with an original prototype i was like this is like a pen now i'm so used to it that i don't get that feeling anymore mm -hmm. but uh so basically i'm a knife guy right and i'm a, a woods guy and so everybody would ask me what i think about their favorite knife or they would tell me what they think about their favorite knife because they want to hear me agree with them. Same thing with guns and me. Right, right. So, and they would show me their knife and it'd be completely unused, right? And so basically the theory, be, it started with the adventure craft with Exodus Knife and Tool. Like if you're gonna end up in a bad spot in the woods, most people would only have a folding knife on them because they're only gonna have what they're carrying. If you could just as easily carry a fixed blade knife you're going to be better off. Um, these are made by White River Knife and Tool out of uh, CPM S35VN. Long story short, stainless steel, easy to sharpen, holds an edge a long time, very stainless. Uh, very easy to carry, very practical. Guys are using these for skinning all kinds of stuff and bushcraft and a lot of food prep. And, uh, and they're easy to carry. Um, they come with nice kite from the factory and stuff. And this is Jaeger's Jackalope. And the idea of this was to match the the, the purpose of the adventure craft, but to make something a little bit larger, not quite as easy to carry, because that's not its primary function. This is like your uh, belt knife. So this is going to be more comfortable to use long term. And if like you're skinning multiple animals or you're doing like a lot of stuff in the woods, this is more of a primary belt knife. And and like and to reiterate, by bushcraft standards, that's a tiny knife. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, um, you know, this is a four and a half inch blade. And um, this this really isn't designed for poking stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so my I, I, I like the tactical side of things. I'm not just a bushcraft guy, and I like shooting. And I think when I look at survival and tactics, they're the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be moving in the woods. I should know how to do some stuff in the woods, okay? And for me, the chances of having to poke somebody with my knife are much lower than the chances of me having to use this knife for like two hours in a day for all kinds of stupid stuff. Well, I mean, if you ask a, a soldier, what did you use a knife for? Open an MRE. MRE. <laughs> Which is why like stupid privates like I was will carry this big old honking knife and they'll get made fun of by everybody who has multiple deployments who carries like a Victorinox Swiss Army knife mm -hmm. and maybe a, a small folder. Mm -hmm. What do you need that giant thing for? And everybody made fun of me, right? right. I also actually carried a, a battle axe for a little while. Good. Built character. Built character, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, and so the deal is, um, uh, I've seen that you've been in the bush a little bit more, and hopefully you can get some good use out of this. But um, uh, we're doing. I'm doing a pre-order right now. Mm -hmm. I've had a problem uh, with with COVID and everything else. <laughs> it, you, you do not have to explain yourself. They get that. Right, right. I can't have enough made to keep them in stock. So right now, I'm doing a pre-order, and the reason is I'm giving people a whole month. I've got custom options that you can choose. It's going to take six to eight months to get to you because that's how long it takes me to get production runs. Mm -hmm. But if you pay the money, you get the knife. People keep coming to me. I got 100, 150 knives. They sell out in like three hours, and they're like, dude, I want your knife so bad and I couldn't take a breath before they're sold out. I don't really want to do pre-orders, but with the way things are going, like if you want a guaranteed knife, this is how we have to do it right now. It will not sell out and you have custom options. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I've got going on now until about April 3rd and a little bit about the designs themselves. So I will tell you as far as custom options, Whatever a knife he's using, that's what you should get. Yeah. Like, everybody wants custom stuff, but, like, the guy that uses it the most. Right. He probably has got it figured out. Well, and, you know, I, I have a lot of knives. 
Uh, uh, everybody watching. Yeah. Everybody watching has a lot of knives. Right. And so, but for me, knives have lost some of their wow factor. So I've got all these knives. I've got lots of wow factor. I have knives that I'm very proud of, but um, I, when I pick my own knives, I usually have the cheapest options. I have natural basic micarta scales, stone wash finish, because to me, this isn't about bling anymore. It's just purely about performance and practicality. But as you evolve, performance and practicality become bling. Yeah. It becomes the thing that I gravitate towards yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, as far as its usefulness. Well, and, and so there's, and there's, as you like progress, you start looking at practical designs. It becomes bling. It becomes attractive to you. What I'm staying away from is the stuff that attracts certain individuals that have less experience. Like I'm not putting a giant saw on the back of one of these knives, <laughs> um, because in my experience and in my in in my opinion, it's silly. But it looks really cool, and we've been taught that it is really cool, and people think their survival knife needs it. So none of the stuff that is put onto a knife to attract new customers, uh, that's not what we're going to be about. Mm -hmm. Just purely practical, like we're going to use the best materials we can, the best designs, and not put any extra stuff. Because usually the extra stuff that catches people's eye that don't have the experience can actually be detrimental. I'm going to say, I'm going to compliment this knife, but it might not sound like a compliment. <laughs> this knife would be at home in your kitchen. Yes. And I'm complimenting complimenting the knife. Like if you, if you have knives that you look at and you go, that probably wouldn't be useful in my kitchen, it's probably not useful at all. Yeah. And so this absolutely, absolutely looks like something might have been in my grandma's knife drawer with a little bit of rust on it. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. A little patina on it. Uh, but, uh, but I... Uh, Again, the the beauty of this is in its simplicity. Right. And a lot of the, um, I pull, um, all of my designs are based on something, okay? And so, so a lot of people say a lot of my designs are super unique. Uh, and they might be unique on the market, but they're all based on stuff that's traditional. And those traditional knives that we've come to think might look boring, are incredibly practical designs from people who really use knives. And that's why grandma's kitchen knives were freaking awesome. Right. Because a knife that looked really cool uh, was going to be expensive if it wasn't practical. Nobody would freaking want it because they would know what to look for in a good knife and they'd be like, this is trash. Yeah, absolutely. We ain't got no time for that. How they find out more about your stuff? Where do they go? All right, so exodusknifeandtool.com. I have a blog that I keep updated, and you can subscribe there so that anytime I put something out, you get a notification. But also, I have Exodus Knife and Tool on Instagram and Facebook, uh, where you can see pictures and updates and stuff. But like, um, some people miss Instagram and Facebook posts, mm -hmm. and then they get mad at me. Dude, I didn't know that you were doing this when I've been putting updates for two weeks and pictures for two weeks up. So, like, if you if you want to know and you don't want to miss it, you've got to join the subscription list. You make sure that my emails don't go to your spam folder, and you will know that something's coming. You will know exactly when it's coming. So there, there won't be any confusion there. And I, I honestly feel guilty, and I hate when people miss stuff. I do whatever I can so that they don't, but I know that that's how this stuff works. Yep. That's how it works. And I feel bad for them because they work hard for their money. They really want it. I really want them to get it. And it just doesn't work out. Uh, I mean, I think that most people understand that, you know. But, like, uh, I'll send out uh, an email for people that have signed up for my email list and, you know, 5% open the email. Well, if you don't open the email from the email list, it'll start going into your spam folder. Mm -hmm. So you think you're not even... So if you sign up for an email from him or me or anybody else, open it or you're going to quit seeing it. Yep, yep. Well, in Beach and Tactical, I used to get like 90% of people were opening it. I was having like 8,000 emails read out of like 8,500 sent. And then one day it went down to like 4,000. And now I get like 100 to 150 open. Like it, That's because Google, Google pushes that over to spam. If they yep. don't open it, yeah, it's 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 wild. So, all right, so you can check out his YouTube channel, 
the Prepper's Bunker Outdoors. And he's got uh, some videos coming out that you might be interested in on battle rifles and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the fight and fighting rifle will have some footage up of that. I was actually going to have that footage up immediately, bring my laptop and edit after classes. Didn't bring the laptop. <laughs> so, you know, you got to wait about a week. Well, I mean, think about if when you guys have trained before, getting all your stuff ready to go train, getting it all together and going, and then go, oh, yes, I'm also a video maker, and I forgot my video making gear. Yeah. Well, luckily, it wasn't the camera or something I forgot, or the SD yeah. cards, because I've done, you know, I went all the way to Arkansas for a show and forgot, like, my business cards. Like, you know, so um, it's easy to forget something. I'm just glad it wasn't something that didn't, like, get in the way of everything. But yeah. A delay is better than, like, a catastrophe so pre-order get on that what else uh we've got uh safety orange which uh might you might not like the looks of it but not losing your stuff i, is I like do really i good. do like it and uh od green uh black and uh stone washed for the finish and then the handle scales burlap micarta od green micarta black micarta and orange g10 so uh, some of the combinations that I've already got coming in are going to be absolutely fantastic. What I'm also going to do is, um, with the pre-order, I'm going to be putting in a very large order uh, on top of that, so I will have extra knives in stock to sell. And the next drop, we will have the next prototype, which will be the Mutant, if you guys follow me. Mm -hmm. I've got four prototypes in the works. They take a little while, but they've got to be perfect before I release them in White River Knives doesn't sell it or send it out unless it's perfect. They're amazing. All right. Absolutely amazing. Jacob and James Jager with Time to Response remind you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.